Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a video where I put Mitchell Marner on defense. We're just gonna say that, you know what? Sheldon was fuming that Mitch broke his 23 game point streak or something like that. So just gonna toss him on defense. Also, yeah, I'm recording this then. Probably gonna come out way after the fact, like weeks after. As you may or may not know, I put Kale McCarr on forward for a different video, and as a result of that, this is the new idea, because there was a comment and it seemed to be highly sought after, so we're gonna try it out. I also saw a suggestion in that other video to change the player from, in Kale's case, from a defense to a forward, but obviously in this case it'll be the inverse, and I don't know how I feel about that, because you could change their position, but technically he's still a forward. I'm doing the whole thing that it's like, Mitch, we're just throwing you back there. But I think for NHL science purposes, I'm going to try both. I'll do three years where he is still a forward, and then I will switch it over and simulate three years where he's listed as a defenseman. If I can even change that. I know you can't from in here. Can you from... The main settings, probably. I also really need a new chair, because this one is creaky. Actually, funny story. So, Tactics reached out to me after I put out the Kale McCarr video, basically saying that he was planning on doing the exact same thing, and I just beat him to the punch. Now, obviously, I told him that, you know, he could still do the video with his own spin on it, or something similar if he wanted to, but... Yeah, um, I don't know, maybe he will, maybe he won't. If you look here, you can see that there is no Mitchell Marner on forward, and that's because he's back here. 90 overall, he'll be paired with Morgan Riley, And they get a plus two, actually, even though he's listed as a right winger. They have Ilya in net, and on top of that, just to show you power play, I changed Marner to be on defense, and I changed it here as well, even though, you know, on a four-man power play, it's kind of just one defenseman. I also swapped out Giordano for Sandine, just because... They were getting a dash three with Giordano for some reason. I tried changing out Lilligren, but it was still a dash three, so I'm just gonna pair the two youngsters together. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead, simulate the first year with Mitch Marner as a defenseman, and see how he performs. The Leafs came out of the gate strong. They were four and one, and then they kind of tailed off, but it looks like they're getting back in the, I was gonna say W column, but once again, as soon as I go to say anything, the game does the opposite. I feel like as a first pair defenseman, he should have a really high time on ice. Seventh in the Atlantic right now. It's actually very close though. The teams are separated by two or three points at the moment. At the trade deadline, 34 wins. We'll have the Toronto Maple Leafs in, I think it was third in the division. Let's go ahead and enter the deadline. I don't know why I'm doing this. There's really no point because the entire purpose of this video is just to see how Mitch Marner plays on defense. So never mind, get me out of here. Be gone with you, trade deadline. The Atlantic Division is so close, it's actually nerve-wracking. With 43 wins and two weeks to go, playoff hopes are still up in the air. It could happen, it could not happen. Okay, I think they have clinched. There you go. Let's find out how Mitchy did. They ended up finishing first in the Atlantic with 102 points, and in the entire league, that is good enough for fourth. So the team still performed quite well. I can't view my own team's lines, unfortunately. I would like to, just to kind of make sure that it does show, but I'm assuming it would. Oh, wow. That's a big slowdown in production. Marner puts up 39 points, can't even reach 40, and he's still 91 overall. Now I'm very curious. Like, if I make him an offensive defenseman, will that change it or not? So theoretically, let's say, you know, he was listed as a defenseman. He wouldn't even be on the front page here. As a matter of fact, not even close. Toronto versus Boston, round one. We all know how this ends. Yep, it's setting up beautifully. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> There's no way. There's actually no way that just happened. EA Sports, if I've ever called your game unrealistic, I'm so sorry. Well... Columbus did just win the cup, but we won't talk about that. In the playoffs, how many points did Marner get? He put up four points in seven playoff games, so you know what? He stepped up a little bit, and if we take a peek at the awards here real quick, I doubt we're gonna see any Marner. In fact, I would be shocked if we did. All right, well, season one is done. Let's run it back. I turned autosave off, so this should make it a lot easier. Should already be configured just the way we had it before. Splendid. Let's do this thing once more. Ooh, that's a pretty big trade. Bo Horvat headed to Minnesota. This season is not looking as good as the previous year, but the division also seems a bit weaker, so it's possible. 
that the Maple Leafs make the playoffs this year, but it is also possible that they do not yet again. I don't mean yet again that they don't make the playoffs. I realize now that that sounded weird. I mean, it's anybody's game at this point, you know, but it does look like they will be in the playoffs. And as a matter of fact, they will be. This year, the Leafs only get 41 wins and 92 points, but they still make the playoffs fourth in the Atlantic division in the entire league, probably somewhat far down at 92, near the middle of the pack for sure. Yeah, 15th. Oh, there you go. Marner put up 58 this year. It's still impacting Matthews, who only put up 79, but... 58 from Marner and 57 from Maury. Unfortunately, Marner still would not be on the first page. He would be right below Roman Yossi here. Just at- oh, nope, even more, because John Carlson also had 59. I was honestly about to do what I did in the Kale McCarr video and just back out. I thought we were done there, but nope. There is playoffs to be simulated. Let's see if the year two playoffs go a little bit better here for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Starting off good. And, oh, they actually did it. They clutched it out in game seven. But they got a familiar opponent here in round number two. And that will do it. William absolutely sent it in these playoffs. 16 points in 12 games. Marner, six points in 12 games. And then Tavares was point a game. Matthews had 10. That's interesting. I once again highly doubt we are going to see Mitchell Marner winning any trophies. No, we do not. But you know what? If we change him to a defenseman, that might impact it. I guess we'll find out, but one more season with him as a forward. He had a pretty big improvement from season one to season two. Let's see if he can keep up that pace and improve even more in season three, which again, it's the same season over and over again, so I don't know how that happens, but anyway, off to a pretty solid start this year and a 10-3 win over Tampa Bay right there. And after that great start, they have fallen off yet again. Will they reach 30 wins by the trade deadline? Oh, they actually do. That's pretty clutch. Once again, Bo Horvat is traded, but this time it is to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Fifth in the division, and we are about to enter April. So, this is again coming down to the wire. 93 points. They're clutching it up here with some big end-of-season Ws. Wow. Holy. Okay, so that was a great way to end the year. A cheeky little eight-game winning streak that started in Florida and ended in Florida. Well, technically it ended in New York, but... You know, their last win was in Florida. So it was like a Florida to Florida type deal. And then as soon as that was done, they took an L. Unless I've been lied to my whole life, Tampa Bay's in Florida. So with 101 points, 125 for the Bruins. What simulation was that? I mean, I guess to be fair, they are killing it in real life right now. So kind of checks out. Leaves 45 wins, third in the Atlantic. And in the entire league, they are fifth. Out of the top six teams... First of all, there's only one Western team, the Dallas Stars, but four of the teams are from the Atlantic. Oh, we would see another minor improvement this time, but 62 points from Mitch, and then we got 88 from Matthews. So this time he would have been on the front page. Montour, did they give him an overall bump? 85? I think he was 83 to start the year. I don't know if the most recent one put him up to 85 or if he was already that, but he deserves it. Wow, no players broke 100 this year. It is playoff time. So let's go ahead and simulate up to here and see how the Toronto Maple Leafs do in the year three playoffs. Started as a first round exit and then a second round exit. Let's see. Uh-oh. <laughs> Will Boston get the better of the Toronto Maple Leafs yet again? No, Toronto swept them. Wow. And they do make it one round further against the Tampa Bay Lightning this time. They're fighting back. And they take an L in Game 7. So it was first round, second round, third round. Matthews went absolutely rogue in the playoffs. 28 points in 17 games. Marner, though, 15 in 17. So, still good. This is the, the man we're focusing on right now. And he's almost point a game as a defenseman, so we take that. Here are the team awards for the year three simulation. And you can see that there is still nothing for Mitchie. But let's turn him into a defenseman. Aha, you can change it. He's definitely not a defensive defenseman. I would say probably an offensive defenseman. I could see an argument for two-way, but I mean, he's a forward. So I'm just going to call him an offensive defenseman. Let's see if this changes anything. Um, did it change his overall? Or is he 87 overall? Oh, wow. That's weird. So as a right winger, he's 90 overall. As soon as you make him a defenseman, he drops down to 87. Now that is 
Very intriguing. I think this is gonna make my life a lot easier now. I could just do best lines and it should toss him on first defense for everything. When I do best lines, it puts Tavares on the second line and I want to try to keep it somewhat consistent. So I'm gonna get the plus five up there and then I guess Yarn Crook was maybe centerman here. I don't know. The team looks different for some reason. And there you go. Mitch Marner now gets a plus five with Morgan Riley. I have a feeling this is gonna make a difference. Even though their chemistry was all right, I'm putting Lilligren and Sandine back in just because. All right, here we go. Mitchell Marner listed as a defenseman season one. Will he do better? It'll probably even make the team do better. How many games was that in a row? I think they lost six or seven in a row. Classic. Going back in the W column there. Back to back against Columbus, however. Fifth in the Atlantic Division after the trade deadline. So, so far it doesn't really seem to be making the team play better. I thought maybe it would, but what do I know? The first round opponent will be the inner province rivalry of Toronto and Ottawa. But let's see how Mitch did. Before we look at the individual, let's look at the squad. Third in the Atlantic, 95 points in the entire league. That is good enough for eighth. So they are on the first page. That's a good season. Oh yeah? Mitchell Marner leading the team with 85 points. It does make a big difference. Okay, so he's gonna take home some hardware. He was 11 points up on the next best defenseman, Quinn Hughes. And even for forwards, he would have been up there. Not on the front page, but it would have been pretty close. Let's see if the playoffs go any different with this change. They get past round number one, and now they are headed to Tampa Bay for round number two. No, it's an L. Tampa would go on to win the cup as well. How about that? Let's check. Yarn Crook leading for points in the playoffs. What happened here? Matthews, Nylander, and Marner all had eight. But Yarn Crook popped off. Nine points. What an absolute mad lad. Also, Pierre, don't you for one second think that I wasn't going to see that 30% right there. Moment of truth. Here is the team awards. Ah, who cares? Individual trophies, on the other hand. The James Norris goes to Mitchell Marner. And that will probably be it. But... There you go, got some hardware this time. If he does really well again, I don't think I'm gonna bother doing a third season because there is just no point, you know? We know he's doing better, listed as a defenseman. So far in the four years that we have simmed though, no Stanley Cup final appearances. First in the Atlantic Division this time around, so this is so far, I believe, their most successful season. There is still lots of hockey to be played though, so will they keep it up is the question. 38 wins at the trade deadline, that is extremely solid. There you go, a trade if you wanted to see it. And one, two, three, four, five losses in a row an instant classic sure why not might as well why don't you lose a few more <laughs> this game is so funny sometimes with 100 points the toronto maple leafs finish second in the atlantic division if we go to the entire league we can see that they finished seventh matthews really went off this year 57 goals 98 points marner had 74 so a bit of a decrease from last year, but still a great season. He once again led defenseman. Hedman was the next closest with 72. So he's only two points up this time. Not as much as 11. So clearly changing him to defense has made a big difference. But we're going to go ahead, sim the playoffs. This is going to be the final playoff sim. I don't think there's a point of doing a third year with him like this. Because we can clearly see that he is superior and they take a first round exit against the Montreal Canadiens. Carolina takes home the Stanley Cup for this final simulation year. And let's see how Mitch performed in the playoffs. There you go. Seven points, six games, led the team. And let's blast through the trophies here. Mitch Marner. Oh, he didn't even get the Norris. That sucks. Well, there you have it. That is apparently what would happen if Mitchell Marner played defense. The Leafs wouldn't win a Stanley Cup, but he would still put up a decent amount of points. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah, just thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. Hopefully it's entertaining you. You know, that's the main purpose. So if I'm doing that, then great. On that note, I'll see you soon.